Hi, my name is Doug King with King Sustainability Consulting. I'm a reviewer and a consultant to the U.S. Green Building Council. Uh, this video is meant to be a brief overview of the LEED Minimum Indoor Air Quality Performance Calculator, including tips and pitfalls that I've seen as a reviewer. Uh, my focus as a reviewer is on the LEED for Homes program, so this video is mostly geared towards residential projects, but uh, the basics should apply to other projects. Um, I'm assuming if you're watching the video that you know Astro 62.1 2010 pretty well and you know how to design a ventilation system. We're not going to get into design here. We're just going to focus on the documentation of the calculations. So the first step is to download the calculator. Uh, a couple ways to do that. One is just to Google it. Uh, the first link that comes up if you search for IAQ Performance Calculator is the USGBC website. Um, the other way is to go through the credit library here I've pulled up the Homes V4 rating system under EQ Ventilation. You will find uh, the credit language and then uh, within the resources section you'll find a link that gets you back to the same place so you can download the calculator. Alright, so once downloaded you'll want to read and follow the directions to complete the workbook. Um, go through your project, you want to figure out how many systems are delivering outdoor air. Um, each and every system delivering outdoor air to an occupiable zone has to be listed in the calculator. Uh, the only exception is for systems that serve dwelling units. Uh, in LEED for Homes, uh, dwelling units need to be served, uh, need to meet ASHRAE 62.2 requirements, so they're not included in this calculator. Uh, in the calculator, all single zone systems are listed on one tab. Uh, this is done by selecting Yes in Step 5 of uh, the instructions. Um, you'll see a new tab pops up. You can add the systems as needed. Multiple zone um, and 100% outdoor air systems are added by clicking the Add System button under Step 5. And you'll want to just select the type, give it a name, and you'll find the system uh, shows up as a new tab. Uh, depending on the complexity of your project, your calculator may include few or, or no multiple zone or 100% outdoor air systems, uh, or your calculator could include 10 or 20 or more. Um, each uh, multiple zone and 100% outdoor air system is added one by one. Uh, so the first tip I wanted to raise is that it's really important to make sure that you're classifying your systems correctly because the calculation methodology is different depending on the system type. Um, so we'll talk about uh, the system types now briefly before coming back to the calculator. In order to discuss system types, I figured we would just go to the source. So this is Astro 62.1 2010. Uh, now, Astro 62.1 defines a single zone system in section 6.2.3 uh, as it says for ventilation systems wherein one or more air handlers supply a mixture of outdoor air and recirculated air to only one ventilation zone. Um, so that's really key, that term ventilation zone. So if we go to page 7, in the definitions section you'll see ventilation zone is defined as any indoor area that requires ventilation and consists of one or more occupiable spaces with similar occupancy category, occupancy density, zone air distribution effectiveness, and zone primary airflow per unit area. Uh, this definition of ventilation zone is really important for distinguishing between single zone and multiple zone systems. It means that if a system serves an area of a building, for example, a leasing office area or an amenity space, um, it's not sufficient to call it a single zone system just because the project team thinks of it, uh, that space as an office or an amenity. Uh, if the office area, for example, includes a conference room or a small corridor, some enclosed offices, um, each of these may be separate ventilation zones under this definition, um, which makes the system a multiple zone system. Alright, so 62.1 defines a multiple zone system in section 6.2.5. Uh, it says for ventilation systems wherein one or more air handlers supply a mixture of outdoor air and recirculated air to more than one ventilation zone. And then uh, it defines 100% outdoor air systems as for ventilation systems wherein one or more air handlers supply only outdoor air to one or more ventilation zones. Um, so there you can see the distinction between a multiple zone system and a 100% outdoor air system, which is that a multiple zone system has um, outdoor air mixed with recirculated air. Okay, so I've pulled up a sample 
uh, completed version of the calculator. Uh, this is not a, a real project, but it's fairly typical for a smaller multifamily building. Um, in this example, I've included a handful of single zone systems, uh, one 100% outdoor air system, and a few multiple uh, multiple zone systems. Uh, the calculator is really nice because it does most of the math for you, so there are only a limited number of inputs, even for multiple zone systems. Um, the gray cells are all required. Um, the white cells are auto-completed or auto-calculated, um, and the full calculation is hidden, but you can see it by clicking or unclicking the Show Simple view. Also, you'll notice there are some pop-up boxes with additional information. So we'll start with the single zone systems where the calculation is quite straightforward. Uh, you want to try to list the zones and the systems in a way that matches the names on the mechanical plans and the schedule. Um, this not only reduces confusion for the reviewer, but it also makes it easier to make revisions later. Um, you'll notice here that I have included a laundry room and a dog wash area. Um, these are two zone types, just a couple of examples really, that um, are often left out of the calculation. So again, I'll, I think I said this before, every non-unit occupiable zone um, and every corresponding system has to be listed in the calculator. Unless it's exempt uh, from ASHRAE 62.1, which is generally we're talking about in that case non-occupiable zones, storage spaces, electrical, mechanical, maybe egress kind of stuff. Uh, one common exemption that is claimed by project teams is uh, the use of natural ventilation. So they'll claim that the system doesn't have to be included, the zone doesn't have to be included because it's being served by natural ventilation. Um, be aware that in ASHRAE 62.1 2010, the natural ventilation section, section 6.4, has changed and operable windows are generally not a sufficient strategy any longer. So if we go back to ASHRAE 62.1 uh, and we go to section 6.2.4, or sorry, section, <coughs> excuse me, 6.4, uh, you'll see here, it says natural ventilation systems shall be designed in accordance with this section and shall include mechanical ventilation systems designed in accordance with section 6.2 and 6.3. What this means in practice is that um, projects that just put in windows, uh, operable windows and doors in a space, it, that, that no longer satisfies the requirements of ASHRAE 62.1. It, it did under the old version, but it does not under this version. Um, there are a couple of exceptions. So here again, if you get something approved by USGBC Part A um, or under Part B, if there are if the openings are permanently open or they have controls to prevent them from being closed during um, occupancy, um, or if the zone is not heated or cooled, those those allow that a project could meet 6.4 without mechanical ventilation, but otherwise, generally speaking, projects need to include mechanical ventilation even if they're putting in operable windows that satisfy the rest of the requirements of this section. So once you've input each system in the calculator and each zone within each system, you'll want to fill out the rest of the inputs. Uh, for single zone systems, the key inputs are the occupancy category, uh, zone floor area, uh, zone population, and zone air distribution effectiveness. And I'll go through each of these briefly. Uh, the occupancy category is up to the discretion of the project team, but there are often several choices that might be applicable. So for example, a common area um, space might be categorized as multi-purpose assembly, multi-use assembly, reception area, break room general. Um, the occupancy category you select should just be reasonable and defensible. And it should also categorize uh, really the entire area in the zone. So if the system is serving multiple spaces and you think part of the space is one occupancy category and part of the space is a different occupancy category, well then really it shouldn't be listed as one zone. It should be, at that point, you're talking about a multiple zone system. Uh, the occupancy category does change the per person and per area outdoor air rates, so you want to make sure you get that right. Uh, the, uh, the default zone population is automatically determined based on the occupancy category and the floor area, but be aware that you're not required to use the defaults. However, uh, the zone occupancy should be, or rather the zone population should be reasonable and reflect expected occupancy density, and it should roughly match the occupancy used um, for cooling load calculations. And so here you can see just as an example, um, if you select no, then you can manually input a different value. The zone air distribution effectiveness is dictated by Table 6.2 in ASHRAE 62.1 2010. Uh, so here you'll see, uh, well, so the most common value in residential projects is 0.8, which corresponds to um, 
the conditions that were a ceiling supply of warm air 15 degrees or more above uh, the space temperature and ceiling returns. But table, table 6.2 does provide a brief description of the conditions that correspond to different distribution or E sub C values. Um, and the user's guide actually has a nice table, table 6b, uh, with more detail and some schematics. Uh, make sure you confirm the, uh, the correct E sub C value, because uh, it can really change the outcome. Um, since the out zone outdoor airflow requirement is equal to the breathing zone ventilation rate divided by the E sub Z, um, incorrectly putting an E sub Z of 1.0, which is fairly common, will underestimate the ventilation requirement considerably. So here, for example, if you change this from 1 to 0.8, so if the mistake is made and we catch it during the review, uh, this will increase the, the um, requirement by 25%. So you want to make sure you get that right. Uh, then the last step here is to input the outdoor air intake flow. Um, this must exceed, obviously has to exceed the requirement, uh, and it really has to match the plans and the mechanical schedule. One of the most common mistakes I find is that the values that are here don't match the mechanical schedule, um, and that's obviously a mistake. Now, sometimes that's a version control problem, uh, but sometimes it's just one person's inputting the values here and that's not the same person who's actually doing the designs or something along those lines. So we can get discrepancies. So these values have to match. Um, so that's the other tip. Make sure they match the plans and the schedule. And also, as best you can, make sure the these values are shown on the plans and schedule. So as a reviewer, we can actually see that they match up. Um, it also means that by having them on the plans and schedule clearly, uh, that one time comes to actually install the equipment and do testing and balancing, everything will be done correctly. So for 100% outdoor air systems, um, the, the process is more or less the same, uh, right? Each zone really has to match or exceed the requirement and then the total zone out um, the total system outdoor air and intake has to exceed the, the sum of the individual zones so most of the inputs for a multiple zone system are the same uh, the big difference here is you have to have uh, zone by zone zone air discharge airflow and primary airflow uh, these values should again match the plans it should be the actual delivered uh, airflow to each zone and then the system population has to be input as well as the system primary airflow um, system population may or may not be the same as the sum of the zone population sometimes it's a little lower there can be some justification for that uh, and then the system primary airflow should really should match the sum of the uh, zone discharge airflows uh, airflow values uh, and then finally the user may select table 6.3 as the default uh, or can switch to appendix A methodology. Again, here you'll see the calculation is done automatically, which makes this much easier. Um, and if you do want to see all the details in here, um, this shows you how all the uh, people and area rates are calculated, um, etc. A couple last things. Um, one is I wanted to reiterate a point I had made earlier about the se selecting the right system type. So. This is a really common example where we'll have a multiple zone system, but there's only one zone here, right? So that should be a flag right off the bat because if there's only one zone type, uh, it really should be a single zone system. So here we get this fitness room. This is similar to what we've already got on the single zone tab. And you can see the calculation came out to 230. Um, that same system, if listed or, uh, as a single zone system, comes out to 250 with all the same inputs. Right, so the methodology is a little different and it produces a different result and that could affect compliance. So here again, you could just see putting the right system in the right system type is really important. So one other common mistake that I see is, um, is where there is a central ventilation system that provides air not directly to the zones, but directly to individual systems that serve the zones. So this is kind of a crude, I just put this together, um, but this is the idea where you might have a central air system uh, that brings fresh air into individual systems that runs through a system to a zone. Uh, within the ventilation rate procedure calculations, uh, you don't actually want to list this as the ventilation system. In this case, although this fresh air is delivering to these systems and zones indirectly, it's actually the individual fan coils that would be considered the systems, uh, the ventilation systems here. And so each of these four systems would be listed individually within the VRP calculations, not the central DOAS. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a scenario we see somewhat often. 
So that concludes uh, the video. A couple last notes uh, in terms of what to do with the calculator once you're finished with it. The um, Lead for Homes Verification and Submittal Guidelines, which you can find online, specify that um, these calculations have to be submitted and reviewed and approved by GBCI. Uh, so you'll want to submit the calculations along with mechanical plans, mechanical schedule, um, directly to GBCI at homes, certification at gbci.org. And that'll begin initiate the review process. You'll want to work with your lead for homes provider. Uh, but once that process begins, uh, there are a few steps back and forth. Again, talk to your provider and GBCI for more information. Um, hope you found this useful. Thanks.